Linda, we're going to start with you, girly. Go for it. Hey, I'm Linda Moore. I live in Richland, Washington. I'm with Niken, and I am uh, selling it, um, energy technologies, natural energy technologies. Awesome. All right, Missy Gurley, go for it. Or so muted. I want me to unmute you. I can do it real quick. Okay, go for it. Sorry, I'm Missy Crook, and I saw Unique. Awesome. And where do you live? Oh, um, Everett, Washington. Everett. Awesome. Okay. All right, Miss Angie. I'm Angie Barillo. I live in Kennewick, and I sell DoTerra. Awesome. All right, Lisa, go for it. Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm from Auburn, Washington, and I sell Unique. Hi, Missy. Good morning. Okay, Leah, you're up. Oops, I unmuted you, and so did you. Go for it. Good morning. My name's Leah Chu. I'm from Denver, Colorado, and I'm with It Works Global. Yay! We have our Mountain Standard Time girl today. All right, I'm super excited. We're going to have some fun. So did everybody find the workbook? Awesome. Okay. Is it the 90 day sales challenge? 90 day sales challenge. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I know you have a copy of it. I do. Okay. Missy, I'm pretty sure I emailed it to you, but you may not have seen it yet. It's okay. It's all good. Okay. You'll find that. All the agendas. So Missy did this with me when all the agendas got sent out weekly, and now it's all in one big book, and I'm so happy. No more sending out agendas every single week. <laughs> so I keep making improvements on things. I keep getting there. Huh, Linda? You've been with me a while. It's awesome. So it's exciting. So today it's all about goal setting. If anybody's been with me before, been on any calls, you know goal setting is one of my favorite things to talk about. Love these programs. It is so exciting. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to talk about some things with motivational styles, how to set your goals, how to help other people set your goals. So as we talk about these things, there's a couple things you can kind of like let drift in the back of your head. You can sit and let drift in the back of your head. Oh, that's why my husband does that. Or, oh, that explains my kids. Or, oh, that's why that team member did that. Or, oh, that's why I do that. Oh, that makes a lot more sense now, okay? And these things are all about learning about yourself, learning about the people that you love and you work with. And it's a lot of fun because you get these aha moments and you can better understand other people when you understand some of these principles. So let's get started about talking about goals. And it is so fun what happens when you set goals. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about my philosophy with regards to goal setting. I have this belief that goal setting, if you're someone who happens to believe in God or God-fearing person, that goal setting is another way to pray always. You wouldn't tell to pray always, and it's really interesting because none of us believe we're supposed to be on our knees all day because you wouldn't be on this call if you believe that's what it meant to pray always. So I assume that that's not what you believe. But what I have found is when we set that goal and we have little reminders up and we have little alarms on our phones and we make vision boards and all sorts of things, that this is another way to keep those prayers in our heart. And I have this belief that if we're not setting goals, there's like this little hole in the top of our head and it lets out our goals and our prayers, and it also lets in inspiration and ideas and the ability to brainstorm. And if you're not setting your goals, that hole is really, really tight. If things aren't going out, things can't come in. And as you set your goals, amazing brainstorms and ideas come to you when you're open enough to let out what you actually want. Because the thing is, if you don't tell the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, if you don't put out there what you want, you can't get it back. It, it, you can't be given something that you don't ask for. And so it's this amazing tool for getting what you want. <laughs> now, one of the things I have found about people, especially adults, like I love to work with youth. That's not something I'm actively doing right now except for my own kids. But I'll get back to doing that after this stuff set in stone. But one of the things that I have found 
is that we sometimes start as adults making goals that are kind of politically correct. Anybody like me, you know, set goals of the new year. And it's usually about how you want your finances to look, how you want your body to look, how you want, like, it's all these kind of very politically correct goals that we set. And one of the things that I tell people is I won't teach them any sort of business skill until they first set goals. Because I know that when I tell them to do something that's a little bit different, even though they're going to feel more comfortable with it in the long run, anytime we have change, anytime there's something different going on, um, we kind of resist doing it or we don't have the habit to do it. And you're much more likely to do it if you know why. And that's goals are your whys. So let me tell you a little, a bit, of, a little bit about a gentleman I worked with. He sold an agricultural product and he wanted my help. And I told him, look, the only way I do that is if you set your goals first and you do some sort of um, dream board. And so him and his wife started this dream board and I would go and I would every week he'd have it sitting on the table as we worked and they had like their dream house and they had, um, he had this little two person airplane thing he wanted to build. They wanted to go visit their grandchildren. They were very new empty nesters. So they, their grandchildren lived out of state, these brand new grandbabies they had. So they had goals like that. And one week I went and there was something new on his dream board and it was a picture that had something to do with medical medical needs or something. I'm trying to remember. I just remember it was pink. It was like a bag and a stethoscope or something. And I'm like, so what's the new picture? Cause I knew he didn't want to become a doctor. I knew that wasn't it. And he says, well, my wife has a blood disorder and her sister also has the same blood disorder. But her sister, the symptoms have manifest themselves. But for my wife, they haven't yet. But her sister, her life has pretty much came to a screeching halt. I think what would happen it was something like she would almost bleed out if she even got bumped or bruised. Or it just for her to leave the house, it was very, very complicated. And her energy was low. And it was just a very, very complicated situation. Well, he had found out that his sister-in-law had found a new medication that she was taking that gave her her life back. She was able to leave the house and live the life that she was used to living, but the new medication cost $40,000 a year. And he said, the thing is, I want to be able to afford that medication for my wife when this eventually happens for her and those symptoms of this blood disorder come you know, start manifesting themselves. So all of a sudden, do you think that two person airplane was the top on his list anymore? No, it was that being able to take care of his wife. Do you think that was a totally different motivation as he went out and talked to farmers? Okay. But this is what I find all the time is that right now, when you're first getting started and setting those goals, you're going to put down some politically correct stuff, but it's sometimes not what you want more than anything. And sometimes it's a little bit of fear of what if I don't get it? Sometimes it's a little bit of just, we're now adults and we're being practical and we're being, you know, we're using our cognitive thinking and we can't dream big and, you know, cause that's not practical. You can't do that like we did in our kids. There's all these reasons. So what I have found is a huge helper to get people to kind of overcome and figure out what they want most. And all, well, and then there's a second reason is when they start with a bucket list. So what you're going to start this week is you're going to start a bucket list and you're going to put on there 50 to a hundred things and it's going to be fun. Now I've got my cute little missies who just for easy going and she just has fun and she can put these things down. And then I have my very practical leases. It's like, no, we put things that we really need. Okay. This really has to be fun. This has to be stuff that it doesn't matter if it's responsible. It doesn't matter if you really think it'll happen tomorrow. This is something you're going to do sometime during your life, not next week. Not three months from now. Some of them you might do three months from now, but you're not going to do all 50 of them. You're not going to travel to 50 different countries probably, okay? I just want you to put a bucket list together. And it can have things like places you want to visit, 
It can have hobbies you want to try. It can have people you want to meet. It can have experiences you want to have. And I love memories I want to make. For me, memories I want to make, for example, this last spring break, I had this, I, this thing in my head. We had been to the coast a couple years ago, and it was windy, and I saw people flying kites. And they had these great kites at Costco here. And I was just determined we were going to the beach to fly kites. I don't know why. That was just my thing. I want to go to the beach to fly kites. And I did. I worked on that. And we got to the beach and we flew kites. And it's just it was just this memory I wanted to make. It, it really wasn't important. But it was just what I wanted to do with my kids. And so I want you to put down those things that are just what you want to have happen. And I need you to just let go. Just let go and just have fun with it. Um, a friend of mine who's very, very practical and very responsible financially, stuff like that, she's like, I want to go to India, but I don't really need to go to India. And I don't know why I just keep thinking about it. I really want to go to India. And, and so, seriously, should I put that down? I want to go to India because it's not really necessary. And But I don't know. It keeps me my mind. I want to go to India. And I'm like, okay, look, I don't know what God might have for you to learn or who needs to meet you there, or I have no idea. But all I know is that God didn't make this earth for you just to see none of it. And if that's on your heart, if you never do go, will the world come to an end? Well, no. Well, then just write it down. And so it. I just want you to let go. I want you to go back to that kind of childhood, put down the silly things that you wanted. Um, if you need a good book to kind of like, open your heart up to what you've wanted to do your whole life. Go read or listen to Randy Pausch's last lecture. He has great stories in there about fulfilling childhood dreams. If you don't know who he is, he's this guy that died of pancreatic cancer, but he had this amazing life before that and the way he fulfilled his own childhood dreams. But I want to tell you a story about this. There's another reason I want you to do this besides just to make a list. What I have found is when people make a bucket list, that often, all of a sudden, sudden, something on that bucket list will transpire. Something will happen that's unexpected, that shouldn't have happened, and just doesn't totally make sense. And it's this amazing feeling to see that happen. And when you see something that's not really important happen, all of a sudden you realize how much help you're going to be given to do the things that are most important to you, like your business or helping others with your business or making money with your business because of the way it's going to benefit your family or because you just want to know that you can do something different and hard for whatever your reason is. Okay. So let me tell you a story. So a cousin of mine, we are the same age minus about six months. And when we graduated from high school, one of us got married and had five kids, and that was my sweet cousin, and I went to college. And she had these five beautiful brown-haired, brown-eyed kids and um, loved being a mom, was an amazing mom. But she had a husband who just was not very nice at all, abusive. And she got out of that marriage just a couple of years ago, and she's remarried to someone who's just the sweetest, sweetest guy but she still has a hard time asking for things for herself. Quite frankly, that her first husband beat out of her any, she just didn't feel like she could ask for anything for herself. Well, I wrote this book on goal setting and I called her and I says, I want to email you this book and see if you'll look at my book and tell me what you think about it. And she says, okay, yeah, no problem. I said, and I, I want to challenge you to do something. And she says, okay, what's that? I said, I want to challenge you to make a bucket list. She says, I don't think I can do that. She says, that's way too scary. She's like, I just, I can't ask for things for myself. And, and she also, as a child, her parents were always struggled financially. I mean, she just, she just definitely had a beat out of her that she wasn't allowed to ask for anything for herself. And I said, okay, th that's fine. I said, but if you decide to try it, let me know. I just love to see if what would happen if you try this activity. So she said, okay. I said, I'll see you in a week. So this was seven days before I was going to see her. And I had a speaking engagement down in Utah. And I went down to visit her. And after the speaking engagement, she just kind of kept hanging out and hanging out. And we, 
she, I could tell like there was, she has a big smile on her face and there's just kind of this anticipation. And I'm like, Jody, what's going on? And she says, well, I have to tell you, I made a bucket list. I said, you did? What was on it? She says, well, okay, you know, I really love to do photography. And I said, yeah. She says, well, I, I never dare charge anyone for it. And I wrote down, I want to be paid for my photography. I said, yes, I love it. It's so exciting. What else did you put on it? She says, I put on it. I want to go to Florida. And you know, we do not have the money to go to Florida. I will not be going to Florida anytime soon, but I put on there. I want to go to Florida. I said, that's so exciting. It's awesome. She goes, but no, you wouldn't believe what happened. I said, what happened? It, it's seven days, guys. Seven. She says, well, my husband went to work the next day. And this couple who I had taken pictures for came up to my husband and said, will you give this money to your wife? We want to thank her for taking our pictures. And we know if we give it to her, she won't take it. So we want to give it to you and thank her for taking our pictures. She got paid for taking pictures and hadn't even taken one other picture yet. <laughs> and then it gets even better. So her new husband had some family in town from Florida and she meets them and they see her photography and they said, we want to pay for you to come to Florida and take some pictures for us. Seven days, seven days. Okay. It took about nine months or a year before she actually went to Florida, but she still went to Florida. She went, I have a picture and everything. That is the power in this. Okay. When you see things happen, that shouldn't have happened. There's nothing to explain it, why it happened. All of a sudden you realize that the things that are really important to you and you actually work on, she didn't work on Florida, she didn't work on getting paid, but the things that you work on, that there is help out there for you to accomplish anything you want to accomplish. And I want you to believe that and hang on to that. And when you make this bucket list, when we move to your business goals in a couple weeks, because we're going to set goals over and over and over. And, and I don't know, Lisa, I might drive you crazy because you're like, I already set them. I don't know. But it's one of those things. I need you to just enjoy this process and see what happens. Because I'm a huge believer and you need to set your goals about every 30 days. Because it refuels the fire. It uncovers what you want most. And you see miracles happen because you're stating a new prayer, okay? Please hang on to this and do this activity with me because it makes a huge difference and it sets you up for success for the rest of the class. So um, you do have a sheet in your book and it actually goes to 30, but I want you to find something else and keep going longer. But the first list is your bucket list, okay? And another activity we're going to do is family goal setting and three, six month goals. We're going to set all these little goals and we're going to move this process down. And you're going to see yourself accomplish more goals because most people, I joke that most people are either, I love to set goals and I do it all the time, which honestly, that's usually a pretty small percentage, or I hate to set goals. Oh my gosh, I fail at them and I don't accomplish them. And I just, I don't want to ever set a goal again. I'm never setting New Year's resolution. Or it's, ah, goals can't really be that important. I don't need to write it down. I know in my head what I want. I'm not writing them down. Or, this is what, what most people are. I really want to love to set goals, but I hate it because I haven't accomplished them. So I've convinced myself it's not really necessary. <laughs> okay? That's where most people are. Not 100%, but that's where most people finally get to. I've just decided it's not really necessary. It really doesn't make that big a difference. Okay? but I'm gonna give you tools and skills and activities to help you move past that, yeah, just decided they aren't necessary point. And you're gonna see miracles in your own life and you're gonna see miracles in your family's life and your team members and you're gonna see everybody work on this and it's so much fun, okay? So start with that bucket list. Now, I want this to be an ongoing list through this 12 weeks. So rather you use a notebook, or you put a great big piece of paper up on the wall, or you use your phone and you have a memo that's just for bucket list items, I don't care. But you need to use something that you can continue to add to. This only goes so far, okay? This is just a start. This is just to get you started today. 
but you need to put it somewhere that you can continue adding things. And I want you to have fun with this. No shoulds, no perfect weights, no, no, uh, no, no. This is just fun. This is no should yourself to death. These are, that's not the kind of activities we're doing on this. Okay. So does anybody have any questions on bucket list? Why we're doing this? And, and you'll understand more why you did it after you see your own miracle, but everybody on board say, I will leave. I, I will write my own bucket list. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I will write my own bucket list. There you go. Okay. All right. So I want to see by the end of the week, a couple of your most exciting things that you've put on your bucket list. And I'm serious, like three days from now, five days from now, seven days from now, something's going to pop in your head and you're like, oh, I forgot. I always wanted to do that. Oh my gosh. Can't wait to write it on my bucket list. Okay. It's going to be fun. Okay, so we're going to skip here just a little bit. We're going to, oh, uh, let's see. First of all, we're going to talk about daily inspiration. One of the things I'm a big, 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 big believer in is reading books and getting daily inspiration. It can, we're to a point, when I started this, um, we didn't have YouTube and this kind of stuff. There, there's podcasts, there's magazines, there's YouTube, there's my book, there's tons of other books out there. Okay, you rather you want to read it or you want to listen to it auto, auto, I'm not saying that right. <laughs> if you want to just listen to it, I'm a big fan of audible.com. You can, for 22 bucks a month, you can download any two books. They can be up to $40 books. Um, I have lots of books downloaded. If you need some recommendations for books, let me know. You know, Power of Positive Thinking, How to Win Friends and Influence People, success principles, you know, any of those. Just let me know if you need some ideas. But it's incredibly, incredibly important that you're choosing to do some sort of daily inspiration every single day. So I had a huge growth time in my very first business with direct sales. That is, I lived in North Dakota. And luckily, gas was only 99 cents a gallon then. This was before September 11th. And I traveled a hundred miles one way, 200 round trip for almost every party I had. Okay. I lived in the middle of nowhere. I had this really great car, this cute little Nissan Maxima. And I drove and I drove and I drove and I drove and I drove. And so I would take my books and I would burn them on CD and I would listen because this is before the day of iPads or iPods. You plug it in your car. I listened to book after book, after book, after book, after book, and then I would re-listen to them. And it was one of the greatest things I ever did for myself because I heard story after story after story of people overcome, overcoming things that were hard and accomplishing hard things. And that was an incredible gift to give myself and to my team members and my business. And I did big things with my business. I am a huge believer in this because guess what? You're going to go about your business, and I'm going to give you a lot of good ideas. And sucky things are still going to happen. Okay? I had a deal yesterday that fell through with a big insurance company, and I cried, and I had my moment, and I asked God to open me a window because my door shut. And you're going to have that happen, and I'm going to have my window open. It's going to be fine. But I, you know, I don't have a magic pill for it to never be hard or never have disappointing things happen. I have lots of magic pills for helping you have more success in a shorter amount of time and connect with more people. And I have stuff like that, but I don't have anything that keeps you from ever having a hard disappointing thing happen in your business. That's going to happen. But when you're listening to this daily inspiration, it will keep you going when things are hard. Okay. And you will learn stuff that you didn't expect to learn. I have this funny little opinion on reading books or listening to them <laughs> that to do it three times in a row, listen or read the same book three times in a row. The first time you read it, you're going to get some ideas and you're going to get motivated and excited. But seldom does anybody actually apply anything that they read if they just go on to the next book and they don't kind of like take time to marinate it and figure out which things in that book they're really going to apply. The second time you read it, you pick one or two things out of that book because there's always a whole long list of things that you need to improve. And you can pick one or two things and you decide, okay, this is the one I'm going to really apply. 
And then as you're applying that new technique, then you read it one more time for motivation to keep going and you'll learn new things. Oh, that's how I apply this thing as you're actually actively doing it. So whatever book you pick, I'm just a huge believer in reading it or listening to it three times in a row. I listen to my books over and over again quite frequently, and I listen to it at one and a half times the speed because my mind wanders really easily. And if it's going faster, because you know we're women and we talk faster than men, um, that way I get more out of the book and I have to pay attention better. It drives my husband crazy when he comes in my books on and it's one and a half. It's not quite chipmunks, it's not that bad, but it's still faster than his brain processes just because he's a man and he's different. So that's what I do to get through books faster and so I process more of the information. So pick a book, and for some people it's scriptures. For some people it's their Bible, okay? Um, whatever you want to use, but use something. And then also do product knowledge every day, but for about 10 minutes. Most of you spend plenty of time learning about your product and how to use it. You've got to spend more time learning how to run a business, okay? This is one of my huge pet peeves, huge pet peeves with um, any direct sales business is they'll spend so much time teaching you how to use your product, um, show it to other people, play, show, and tell, and they need to spend more time on the becoming business people, okay? But you're going to start connecting the two a lot more. And um, I mean, I love the product. That, that's such a huge reason why so many are with your companies is because you're in love with the product. So yes, you've got to do some, but it's time to also learn about businesses. So let me tell you, there was um, this book called Success Principles. One of its tips, there's like, Success Principles has all these different tips on how to better achieve whatever you're working on, whether you're an Olympic athlete or you're a business person or whatever it is. And one of the things that it taught is you need to spend 80% of your time doing the thing that you're best at and that makes you money. And I was with scrapbooking, okay? I can tell you that I can scrapbook and spend so many hours making the most beautiful samples and displays that of course you're going to want to sell, you know, buy my wonderful stamps and paper because look at all these beautiful things you can create with it, okay? You didn't need to see that many samples to still like it and buy it. And I like was wasting my time because it was ridiculous. Or I do these big things. They were called swaps. You made 12 of the same card. You send them off and you got 12 different ones back. Somebody else made them. But I could spend hours, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours making all my beautiful little dis designs. Okay. And the thing is, is that. When I listened to this book and realized I was spending a lot of time, I also had a bunch of Yahoo groups at the time. It was Yahoo groups and Facebook groups. I'd have all these groups. I'd connect to people and we'd share ideas, but it was 90% of the time it was either some flyer. It still wasn't talking to people or it was a stamping scrapbooking technique. And I went, wait a minute, this isn't making me money. And I cut my groups off. And I'd worked really hard to get into these groups because these were the business leaders of this company. And I went, this isn't making me money anymore. And I cut them off. And I went to um, convention that next year and I won all sorts of awards. And it was, it was a little hard. I had some people go, where have you been? You haven't been in these groups for a while. But I took home awards that I didn't even know existed that year because I worked on my business and I didn't spend time in those other places that wasn't making me money. Okay. My husband was unemployed at the time. I needed to make this business work, but it's one of those things that you're going to learn these things and learning these business techniques can take you places that you didn't even know you could go. It's really amazing what can happen. Okay. So find something and make sure every single day you're fitting that in your day, whether it's in the morning or in the afternoon or while you have your coffee at 3 p.m. or, you know, whatever it is, start to make a habit of getting in that daily inspiration because it really, the other thing that happens is it will kick in your creative juices. That ability to brainstorm, that ability to um, problem solve, when you're like, ooh, I want to find more of this kind of customer. So, um, like my, my friend Danji down here at doTERRA, she may have a new oil or something new that she's heard. This is a way to use this oil 
she may think, mm, I wonder how I find more customers that have this situation. And those juices start flowing, and it's amazing what will happen. You will find people that you didn't expect to find. It's really cool. Okay, so let these things really help you. The goal setting, the daily inspiration will do amazing things for your brain power and your energy for working your business. Okay, so we're going to jump down. We're going to talk about the tracker at the end. Let's first talk about what's called motivational style. Some of you, we've talked about this before, um, and and motivational styles is incredibly important to understand. This is from a book called Get Motivated, and there are three questions that you ask yourself or ask others, and Get Motivated by Tamara Lowe, L-O-W-E. And it's really fun. Oh my gosh, I learned a ton about my kids from this, about my husband, all sorts of things. Um, it's just, it's a ton of fun, this book. And the very first question that it asks is, are you someone who's a change the world person or are you a money and titles person? Now, before there's any judgment passed, these are both necessary types of personalities that we need in our world. And this is why. First of all, the Mother Teresa's who are change the world people need the Bill Gates who donate money. Okay. Mother Teresa can't get very far without some money being donated. So we need both types of people and some people that make a lot of money are amazing philanthropists and do a great deal of good to improve the world. So one of the things that you have to do is take the opportunity to really stop and think about yourself. Am I more of a money and titles person or am I more of a change the world person? And based on that, that will determine how you write down your goals. You have to, if you're a change the world person, and for example, my friend Linda down here, she knows that there's a certain title she's shooting for. And with 22 recruits, this gets her to a particular goal. For Linda, she's a change the world person. Okay, she knows what money can do for her, but it's all about how it benefits her and her family and the things that she wants to accomplish and the peace and the security she wants to have. And that's much more a change the world person. So she has to connect that 22 people with what it is that she wants most for her family and for her life. Okay, some people can just shoot for that 22 and it doesn't matter where they're going to get out of it. They just want to know they can accomplish that. They just want, you know, they love being on stage and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. I am not saying that like they're shallow or anything. I'm just saying that when you understand those different personalities, you can actually recruit more because you have a better understanding of how these different people work and you can bring in people. Like if you are a change the world person, you can bring in money and titles people and they're going to build your business and it's a win-win situation. You can kind of be a chameleon based on who you're talking to. Okay. So does everybody kind of figure out if they're more of a money and titles or a change the world person? Have you kind of, and most people are like a little of both, but one is usually heavy. So if you're a money and titles person, give me a wave. Okay. If you're a change the world person, give me a wave. Okay. So everybody is a change the world person. Okay, so you, when you can learn to talk to those people who are the money and titles people, you, your business can grow because they love that push, okay? Um, they love to be a business builder, and that is something that helps you grow in the long run. So those are just important things to remember. So there's two more questions. The next one is, are you variety or consistency? And, oh my goodness, it's so fun to understand this principle. So I'm, I'm going to bet my money on the fact that Lisa, she's an accountant, and um, she is probably a consistency person, okay? Um, me, I'm a variety person, and, um, you know, if Lisa and I got in a working setting together, she's probably going to go, oh my gosh, why can't Michelle just do this consistent thing over and over again? And I may go, oh, Lisa, why can't you just loosen up and we do more of this tomorrow? Okay. Like we can easily like assume, why can't this other person work like me? 
But when you can go, oh, this is what Lisa needs. You know, whenever, if I talk to Lisa one-on-one -on -one and she's working on getting something consistent happening with her business, I'm going to know she needs to do a little of it every day. If I talk to Missy, I'm probably going to be pretty sure that I can go, ah, oh, Missy, just do, do it six times on Thursday. Don't worry about the rest of the week. And she's like, yes. Lisa's like, no. You know, it's like, it's really funny when you understand this about yourself and other people, you can help give them better assignments based on what they're motivated by. Okay. If I had to wake up every day and do the same thing, I would blow my brains out. Okay. Um, the reason I actually do what I do is because I learned, I figured out how to sell scrapbooking stuff and then I got bored and then I figured out how to sell clothing, but that company actually went under. I wish it hadn't, but still I kind of got bored and then I realized how to sell jewelry and then I got bored and I'm like, what is wrong with me? Oh my gosh. And I read this book getting motivated and I'm like, Oh, I'm a variety person. Oh, okay. This makes more sense. So I can talk about doTERRA and I can talk about makeup and I can talk about work and I can talk about all these different things. And my little crazy soul that needs variety is fed because I'm not doing the same thing and not talking about the same product every day. Okay. And that's just me. But you know, I've got my cute little Lisa up here who is consistent. And as long as she's making money, she can be as unique. She, they're going to love her because she's going to be there for 50 years. Okay. And they are just, she's still going to look gorgeous at 85 and have that beautiful skin and she's going to be all over it. Okay. And she can, yeah. And long eyelashes, gorgeous eyelashes to boot. Okay. And that's the thing. It's like when you realize that about yourself, like I never would have been that man, you know, you know, back in the forties when the person got that one job and that was your job for the whole rest of your life. Okay. Like that's not me. Okay, that's just not me at all. But whichever it is you are, when you're talking to somebody about recruiting or when you're making your own decisions about how to run your business and how to be consistent. So Missy and I, for example, we can have this list of things we need to do in a week and we can do each one of those things on a totally different day every week. I don't know, I'm doing Tuesday morning. I don't know, this time I'm going to do it Wednesday night. We just got to get the list done sometime during the week and we're fine with it moving around. Lisa's not so fine with it moving around. Okay. Like, and, but when you realize about that, about yourself or when you're handling a team member, like you're going to have a team member. It's like, no, I want you to call me every Tuesday at two. And that's just, they just want it consistent. And then so everyone's like, I don't know when you get together, whatever's fine. And that's what they really mean. They're not flaky. They're just one's okay with variety and one's okay with consistency. And you've got to know that about yourself because as crazy variety people, I still have to find ways to be consistent about things, which I have, I have a lot. I'm certain I can learn from Lisa because I like, Oh, I like my variety, but there's certain things I need to be consistent about. Okay. And when you can just be nice to yourself, it makes a huge amount of difference. Okay. And it also makes a huge amount of difference of how you can interact with a team member when you understand that about them, then you can make specific suggestions based on knowing what will work for them. Because if you are the consistency person, for example, Lisa, you're going to have team members. And if you have this person who just loves variety, which is pretty easy to attract those because makeup is kind of a creative process. So sometimes you end up attracting more people on the creative side. You're going to have to be able to tell that creative person how to get everything done without her going, I am so bored, I cannot do the same thing every day, okay? So it's kind of fun to see how you can better help yourself and other people. Okay, so the last one is working independently or working in a group. And it's so important to understand, do you feed off of being in a group and working around other people, or do you feed off of being by yourself and just getting that job done and and being consistent and doing things on your own. And it's really funny because I can talk in front of a group of 2,000 people and I can be with a group if I have a specific job, but I do not like bunco nights. I do not like study groups. I do, I'm not in love with team meetings. Okay, those things make like the consistency want, they're like, ah, it doesn't do anything for me. But when you wonder why a team member doesn't show up to team meetings, you might find out they're a work independently person and you just know you need to spend 20 minutes on the phone with them that week and they're going to keep moving along and doing their own thing. They're not antisocial. They just don't get motivated by being in a group, which would be like me. 
okay? Some of you, oh, let's get together, let's all make our phone calls together, and by the end of the team meeting, let's all have 60 parties booked, and, and they're like, whoa, that totally fuels you. Okay, not me. Each of you are different, and when you learn that about yourself and you learn that about your team members, you can do your goals based on what works for you and get a lot more done, okay? So who's a work independently person? Who's a work in a group person? Okay, surprisingly, I thought you'd be independent. Okay, I love to know, I love when I'm wrong, it's fun. I'm like, really, cool, okay? So those are things you need to learn about yourself. So you can even use yourself as a group, okay? Like you say, okay, everybody, we're gonna, this is, these are the hours, we're gonna make these phone calls and we're all gonna be accountable to each other and when it's all done, we're gonna let each other know how much in sales or parties we booked or whatnot, okay? Like if those kind of things fuel you, go for it, okay? Know what it is, like I even worked with a soccer team and it was really fun because I asked them, you know, are you work by yourself or are you working in a group? And those that worked in a group, I'm like, okay, you work in a group, people, you know that on Tuesday nights, six o'clock, you're gonna get together and you do this extra workout. You guys that are work on your own, by Tuesday night at six o'clock, you need to email the coach and tell him that you got your workout done. And both groups are gonna be fed and happy. And the independent people weren't going to be bugged by the people that, oh, we've got to have a group, we've got to talk and hang out, and then we'll exercise too, and then we're going to hang out. And the person was like, we're working. What's wrong with you? This is work time, okay? And that's what's so fun is you can let people work the way that it best works for them. There's got to be another word for that, but most effectively for them when you understand that. And for you, you know exactly what you have to do. If I run away to the library and cannot hear my children or anybody or be interrupted, it is like the best thing ever for me. I get so much done. It's because I'm an independent worker, okay? So whatever works for you, start learning how to do that more and you'll be more effective. It's really, really fun, okay? Is everybody kind of learning that? Are you getting it? It's pretty cool, huh? It's really fun. Okay, so let me look at the time here. All right, so... The last thing we want to talk about, okay, so we're going to talk about habits, and we're going to talk about this tracker. This is incredibly important to know because um, we can do this to ourselves, and we can do this to other people on our team or even our family. One of the things that most people don't understand is when they're not working their business smart, it's not a lack of knowledge. You've usually trained them well or trained yourself or you've, you know, product knowledge yourself to death and you know everything there is. Um, it's not lack of desire. It's not lack of work ethic. So many people, oh, this breaks my heart when people go, I'm so lazy. I didn't get it done. I'm so lazy. I'm like, no, you're not. No. You know what? All it is, you just haven't made a habit. If you have to show up to a job, punch a clock, check in with somebody, like it's kind of this, well, if I don't do that, I'll get fired. What happens if you don't work your business? Does someone from the corporate office call and say you're fired? No. The only one that fires you is you, okay? And, and for some reason, you'll put up with that. You'll put up with firing yourself. But, you know, if you're working at some office, you wouldn't do that, okay? So what we have to do is just to retrain your brain to go, oh, I didn't do that. Okay, instead of beating myself up and calling myself names like lazy, I'm going to go, oh, guess what? oh, I haven't been making this a habit. Okay, what can I do to make this a habit? And that's what this tracker is about. Alrighty? Okay, so we have daily inspiration and review your goals. Those are two non-negotiables. Those are on your tracker. That's what you get to do every single day. And what, what you're going to do is the whole idea of this is just to help you start creating habits that get you to where you want to go. You are more than welcome to put personal goals on here. For me, getting some exercise so many times a week clears my head, makes me better. I, I can be better for all of you if that's how I'm doing it, okay? So whatever it is that works for you, so business habits and personal habits, you're more than welcome to put on here. So goal setting, reviewing your goals, and doing your daily inspiration, I highly recommend you do five to seven times a week. Down at the bottom, you have what's called target points and actual points. You're going to put in target points how many times you intend on doing that in a week. Now, the other thing you can do for target points instead is if you say, I want to contact so many people a week, 
um, whether it's via phone or you want to make so many new contacts while you're out and about, or uh, maybe you want to sell so many things of fiber lashes, okay? What you can do is put the number in here, and every time you make phone calls or sell your fiber lashes, you make a check mark. So you might have 10 in one day and two in another, okay? This doesn't have to be something where you're doing it every day, but it does have to be something that's measurable by a number. So either it's something I check off that I did on a daily basis, or I want to do it this many times during the week. So that's what's fun about the variety and consistency person. They're the person that wants variety, they can do all that work in one day, they can have 10 boxes in one day and be done. And those that are consistency can go, I'm going to have two checks in each box for five days and that will total my 10. Doesn't matter, as long as you do whatever your goal is, I don't care if you do it all in one day or if you do it exactly this many times, so many days a week. What matters is that you work, okay? So you can pick up to four, you do not have to pick four. You may if you'd like to, okay? You have four new habits that you can create. On the, what is this? The, well, if you're looking at it, it's the left-hand side. It says weekly activities. These are for things you only do once a week. Maybe it's a two-hour phone calling session, maybe it's a date with your husband, maybe it's a team meeting. Um, whatever it might be, it's just something you're gonna check off once. Those are worth five points. Okay, and those you would do the same thing. You total the points, but times five. And at the end of the week, what you do is you'll have your actual points, you'll have your target points, you divide one into the other, and you end up with a percentage. Okay, that percentage shows you how much you work towards your goal. Now, guess what? Even 10% means you work 10% towards your goal. Doesn't matter, there's not A, Bs, and Cs. You don't flunk at 60% in this game, okay? This is, you did something that week towards your goal. What did you do consistent? And in the back of your um, of your workbook, there's 12 of these. So you don't have to ever print them off. Well, while you're working with me these 12 weeks, there's 12 trackers. What you need to do is take them out of your binder and put it next to your bed, okay? When it's the first thing you see in the morning and the last thing you see at night, you're more likely to do it and you'll check it off. Put it by your bed. Okay, so, um, and then, if you look in the very front of your book, we have this really fun thing. This is a little award system you can earn at the end of this um, class period. And so, your points are your percentage. If you have 88%, you have 88 points. Okay, pretty easy, right? Yeah, just move the decimal over. And you'll, you have different levels. You can get the garden level, the meadow level, or the forest level. That's how much your business grew, okay? And you need to check off the assignment that you did the assignment that week, and that's an email to me. At the end of each of these chapters, there's what says an assignment. This week, you're gonna send me your motivational styles. You're gonna send me something from your bucket list. You're gonna tell me what some of your activities are that you're gonna put on the top of your tracker. There might be one other question. And you're going to email that to me and let me know how it's going. And so you can check off that box, and then I want to know how many weekly points you earned at the end of the week. Okay? Does anybody have any questions about that? If you look here, you have um, on the other side of it, there's one that's filled in, so you can get kind of an idea how it works. And there's written instructions, too. Okay? If those two things still, I'm still confusing, which sometimes I can be, um, feel free to send me an email, but you need to fill this out tonight, okay? So if you have questions, I should hear about it by tonight. Because if you don't fill it out till next Monday, that means you didn't work on it all week, okay? <laughs> I know, kind of silly. So do your assignments tonight, because then you'll get a lot more out of the class, okay? Don't wait till next Monday. Do it now, okay? Um, okay, so your bucket list, your motivational styles, your things for your... Um, tracker, anything else? Okay, is there any questions on the assignments or the material that we've covered? No, who's more excited? Yay! <laughs> okay, um, so I want you to have some fun with this tracker or this workbook. Okay, this is yours to. You can print off, you can write in it. I just ask that it's only for your personal use. Please don't send it on to anybody else. Okay, this is a year's worth of my life, putting this 
this darn book together. Linda's lived through some of it. She's been with me for a while. Um, this is, I'm so excited about this workbook. It's kind of fun. It's, it's my baby, and I'm so excited for what it's going to do for each of your businesses. And you guys are awesome. Thank you for being with me. And if there's anyone you have in mind that you think might um, this training could be useful to them, I still take clients up to next week. I just have them watch this recording and get caught up, and they can still work with us. So let me know if there's anyone else on your heart that you think should I should talk to and see if their goals, if this would fit what they want to work on. Okay. Any questions? Anything I can do for you? Yes, Leah. I have a quick question. So yeah. when we're set, when we're talking about setting our goals and things, I heard you talk about convention. Mm -hmm. Should your company's yearly convention really be on your goal list? Do you feel it's something that can really take your business to the next level? Okay, this is how I handle conventions and leadership trainings. If they're, I go to convention with a very specific list of things I want to get better at and learn. Okay. Um, it, conventions are great for motivation. Conventions are awesome for product knowledge, especially when there's new products that come out. Conventions are great for, ooh, look what so-and-so did. I can shoot higher than I'm shooting. And they are great for a certain amount of, um, of business building skills. I have yet to see anybody be really, really good, any company be really good about consistent follow-up afterwards when it comes to a business training skill. And so it just breaks my heart because we'll go to convention and we'll get these ideas. And if we apply one consistently through the next year, you're pretty amazing. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, that's why, like, I'm going to start doing these weekend four-hour trainings in different parts of the country. I'm coming to Seattle, Portland, one here, and one in Boise. But it all will be with the goal that, hey, I would love for you to keep working with me because that's how you're going to apply these things that I teach you. Okay? I will always offer that because it doesn't show integrity in me to teach you a bunch of stuff and let you go home because I know you won't apply most of it. And so conventions, if you can afford it, if based on the goals you have that you need the techniques that they're going to teach, then go. But I was a big leader with a company and one year I went, convention's not what I need to grow my business and it didn't make them very happy I didn't go <laughs> because they really wanted me there. And um I wouldn't say don't go and this isn't about me there's other trainers besides me but I would say if you're going to spend a couple thousand dollars because usually you have to fly there and then the cost of the training and the hotels and the food if you're going to spend money I would spend it on consistent and you have to choose because you have unlimited amount of money I would choose a trainer a consistent program that's three to six months over a convention if you're putting a couple thousand dollars into investing in yourself. Now, I know that's not going to win me friends with companies by saying that, okay? No, and I appreciate your honesty because that's kind of how I was looking at it, you know, product knowledge and things, but I would rather invest in things like this for the same amount of money that can really grow my business. So next year, it's not a either or. It's all, oh, yeah, I can totally go there and continue yeah. on global. All yeah. right. Thank you. Um, I got to run. Okay. Bye, Leah. But thank you. You bet. So please just know that I love conventions. I love the energy. I love the um, conventions are awesome. They put a ton of energy into them. Um, just know that you've got to go with very specific goals of what you want to learn because there's so much information that comes in. You can't apply it all. So you go, oh, so-and-so talked about this. I wanted to get better at hostess coaching or I wanted to get better at closing the deal or I needed an idea on how to promote this one product or whatever it is. Go with specific goals. If it's a leadership training, usually you'll get uh, a workbook and outline the night before. And I read through all of it and I highlight when it is I need to be paying attention because I can't pay attention for eight, ten hours for three days in a row. I don't know about any of you, but I don't take all of it in 
So I have to know when I need to be 100% engaged and when I can kind of mentally relax and come back in. And so when I go to leadership trainings, I go with very specific, like I need to get this out of it. When I get home, I need to know exactly how to be doing this. So I, I guess I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to that, but I figure when I put that much money and time in it and have to leave my babies, I better be getting something out of it more than just fun and hooking up with my friends that are there. But like you said, like, you know, I already told you I'm a work independently person. Big groups don't fuel me. So that's not why I do that. If you are a group person, that might be a good reason to go because it does fuel you. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. <laughs> Get the heads up from Leah. Okay, so please know I, I'm not anti-convention. I'm just make sure you get something out of it and can apply it when you get home. Set yourself up for success for that. Like I should probably do a whole hour training on that. <laughs> Maybe a free call. Okay, everybody's going to your conventions. This is how you get the most out of it. Um, hopefully one day I'll be speaking at those conventions. That's the long-term goal. That's the goal hopefully 2016 for sure. Okay. Any other questions? Anything I can do for you? Lisa, go for it. So, um, there is a topic in the lesson today. It says reading, creative goal setting, and habit forming three chapters one through three on goal setting. Yes. Did I send that book to you? I, I didn't have it. You don't have it? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to I attach it. I think I do either. Okay. I will go back and resend out the email that I sent just a couple hours ago and attach it. So that's my book I wrote. It's a PDF. Um, I'm working on getting it published through Amazon. Well, it's called Create Space, and hopefully that will be on Amazon in a couple weeks. I got to finish it. There's there's a first. There's a new part beginning to the book I'm working on that I got to tweak. I learned some stuff <laughs> since I wrote the book. I'm like, I got to tweak it. So anyway, so that's just for your use, and I will email you out that book. And kind of fun. Okay, any other questions? Yep, no? Okay, you guys. Awesome. I am so 